The CDC issued a health advisory warning there is an increase of invasive meningitis. Bacterial meningitis can be deadly within an hour. It causes your brain to swell and impacts your spinal cord. There is a vaccine, though. Doctors suggest the first dose at 11 years old and another at 16. However, the CDC may consider proposed changes to that schedule. Our Sally Hernandez talked with a nurse and a meningitis survivor for their take. Jonathan, tell us a little bit about your journey, your experience with this bacteria. Yeah, so it happened back in 2005. I was your normal college student, um, just turning in a paper for one of my classes, and I started having those flu-like symptoms. So, you know, just being a normal person, having the flu, I just decided I'm just going to rest that day, and I decided to take a nap. And the next thing I remember, it was 12 days later, I woke up from a coma mm -hmm. and da doctors were just, you know, all over the place and just trying to save my life. And they said that they needed to amputate all 10 of my fingers and both of my feet. So just to save my life. Were you vaccinated against this, Jonathan? And what would you tell those who um, have not been? I, and I was not vaccinated at the time. I wasn't even aware that there was a vaccine available. And had I known that it was, I would have gotten vaccinated. Um, I think right now I, my job is just to really educate the community that the vaccine is available and to talk to your primary care doctor about, you know, if their vaccine is available for their children. What, what would you tell people who would say, you, why can't you just get one at 16 years old? Why do we need to get one at 11? The reason we want and we think people need to continue to get it at 11 is that the risks start to increase in that adolescent period, that 14, 15 year old. Think about what people are doing at 14 to 15 and sharing utensils or you know, sharing water bottles. That puts these individuals at risk. And then we get that second shot to provide additional protection through those years where they're heading off to maybe what we call communal living in a dormitory or even in apartments where they participate in activities that put them at risk. Wonderful. Dr. Wright and Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us this morning.